A colloid cyst is a type of brain tumor that can arise deep in our brain and can obstruct the flow of fluid. It can lead to headaches, nausea, vomiting, and in rare cases, sudden death. Yesterday, I presented a case of a 39-year-old woman who came to the emergency department with complaints of headaches. She had been diagnosed with migraines many years ago and had been on treatment, but over the past few weeks, her headaches had just seemingly gotten worse to the point where she was becoming nauseated, throwing up, blurred vision, and feeling just not herself. She came to the emergency department last week and was given a migraine cocktail and sent home into follow-up with her PCP. When she called her doctor, it was going to be a week before she could get in to see him, so she came back to the ER for another evaluation when she just seemingly couldn't shake this headache. That's when they performed this CT scan of her brain that showed this right here, and that is a colloid cyst. Colloid cysts are benign growths within the third ventricle of the brain near what's called the foramen of Monroe. If you're looking at a cross section of the brain, it's actually sitting right here, which is almost dead center in the middle of the brain. Precise etiology of where they come from is unclear and it's still debatable. It's an epithelial line cyst that can be full of gelatinous type material. That can be mucin, yeah, like snot, old blood products, and even cholesterol. Almost all of them, 99% of them, occur in the third ventricle. We've talked about this before, but we have a ventricular system in our brain, which is fluid that circulates all inside of our brain and follows all of these arrows. And the third ventricle is right here. So if you have a little cyst that obstructs the outflow here, you can imagine that pressure can build up. And that's exactly what happens if the colloid cyst becomes a certain size it can obstruct the way our fluid normally circulates through our brain and can lead to a condition called hydrocephalus. It can act like a ball valve of the third ventricle and fluid can come in and then it can obstruct fluid as it circulates through the third ventricle. And symptoms of hydrocephalus include headaches, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, feeling off balance, feeling out of sorts, and acute obstructive hydrocephalus can even lead to sudden death. MRI is usually the next step and you can see the circular mass dead center in the middle of the brain. And on T1, it will be ISO intense and hyper intense on flares and T2 imaging. And it will not enhance on contrasted studies. How do we treat them? It really depends on the symptoms and the size of the lesion because a lot of these are found incidentally, meaning the patient has a CT scan and we see it, but it may not be causing any symptoms. On those type of patients, we will usually observe them with serial imaging, meaning we get an MRI every year or so. I'm worried that a colloid cyst may need surgical resection if it's 10 millimeters or greater in size, because those are the ones that can typically obstruct the flow of spinal fluid. Colloid cysts that aren't causing symptoms and are less than one centimeter in size, we will usually just watch. If the mass is large or if there is any signs of hydrocephalus, Surgery is usually indicated, but it's deep in the brain. How do we get them out? The really cool thing about surgery is that we have developed so many new techniques in order to access areas of the brain that used to be challenging by getting through with open surgery. And in cases of colloid cysts, they are typically removed endoscopically by inserting a very small camera deep into the brain and using special instruments so we can get in there and resect that mass. Here is a view of the endoscope that's sitting inside of the ventricle and we can see all the anatomy within the brain, including this large colloid cyst. These are super cool cases with really great anatomy and then you can resect the mass and the patients do really well because they're completely benign and essentially they're cured. So you know how this goes. The patient was diagnosed with a colloid cyst. She underwent endoscopic resection of the lesion and went home on post-operative day number two. Completely cured and all of her headaches are gone. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.